Well, this is our number one podcast. Um, I'm Steve Reese, and I'm here with my son, Micah. I'm in Mississippi, United States, and Micah is in the Melbourne area of Australia. And um, we have we talk a lot on the phone, and we thought, you know, it'd be interesting to start recording some of these conversations in the way of a podcast because it's, you know, we're we're just little people and um, don't have any big name or anything. But we thought, you know, a lot of the things we talk about are are important life changing kind of things that we're going through and we thought maybe there's people going through what we're going through so that's what got this whole idea started so here we are this is number one and um so i'm steve and here's my son micah <laughs> yeah yeah really really uh really really excited to actually um start start doing this um i think i think in so many ways you know um <clears throat> you know, God, God puts, you know, or the spirit puts, uh, ideas on, on our, on our hearts. And, and, um, those aren't ideas that are just for us. Those are, those are ideas and those are things that are important. Um, you know, not just for us, but, but, uh, the, the broader, wider audience as well. And, you know, the idea of a podcast has really been something that has been, um, you know, on, on my mind uh, a lot. And, and I know it's been on your mind a lot as well. And, um, you know, and I think it's just a matter of being faithful to that, to that word now. And, um, yeah, and, and everybody experiences things differently. And I think, um, has a lot of people who may or may not, you know, listen to this, uh, you know, to, to the, what we're saying today, being in, in Melbourne right now, uh, in the, you know, in Australia, um, you know, I think it's, you know, there's been a lot of coverage about, you know, what's going on here. And, um, you know, I think sometimes it's a matter of how, you know, how, how do we, how do we as believers nowadays, you know, keep our heads up? Um, you know, how do we keep, how do we keep our heads above the waves and, you know, and to keep from drowning? And I think that's really what this is all about. So one of the things that seemed to make a real impact, well, first of all, it made an impact with me. And then I shared the video to you and you took off and ran with it. Um, was that, um, Eric Little, Little, uh, I can't remember. His I, think name. It, I think it was Eric, Eric Luddy, yeah. Luddy, yeah, that's right. And it was called Rock Hazak, and uh, it's called The War Cry. And uh, I would encourage everybody to go on YouTube and pick it up. It's about six minutes. And man, uh, I listened to that. A friend of mine from New Zealand actually shared it with me, and then I shared it back down to Australia. But um, I tell you, that really got my attention because. Um, we have kind of just been passively sitting back and just letting all of this stuff just come at us and kind of bowl us over. And, and this was a, this rock hazak. Um, it's a Hebrew word that means great courage or audacious certainty of success and not success on, on our part of what we're going to make happen, but depending on God to step into our lives and work out his plans and his purposes in our lives. And um, and I just was so taken with that. And so when I shared with Micah, you know, you can maybe share what you thought about it, buddy. Yeah, I, you know, for me, I think there's been a few times in my life where, um, you know, the Bible, the Bible says, you know, that, that, that you'll know the truth and and the truth will set you free and you know there's been there's been a few times in my life where where i know what the bible is talking about when it when it talk when it uses you know when it talks about truth and you know the the day the day that the day that um that, that god you know revealed himself to me was one of those days that was the ultimate truth and that was a you know, pivotal moment in my life and you know there's been other 
instances throughout my life where, you know, I guess I relate them to these little specks of truth, you know, and it's, <laughs> you know, just this micro piece of truth, you know, is enough to change your life, you know, is enough to make, to, to make you pivot, you know, is to make you, is enough to make you turn and, and, you know, and start going another direction. And for me, I think when I, when I heard, when I heard rock, you know, rock has um, and you shared that video with me, when I heard that, that was another instance in my life where, you know, it struck me as, as instant truth, you know, and, and I, I reckon these instances because they're like, they're like puzzle pieces, you know, we, we have this, you know, we have this infinite number of puzzle pieces that, that, that is the mystery of the universe. It's the mystery of our lives, you know, and every now and then we get a new piece to that puzzle. And at some right. point in time, that puzzle is going to be complete. And I'm not talking about here on earth, but, you know, the Bible says that at some, you know, at the end, all things will be revealed, you know that that truth that we will know truth and you know but along the way we have this opportunity to have these these pieces of truth added to our puzzle and you know for me when i heard that video i didn't really realize the impact that it was going to actually make on me moving forward in my life i just watched it as like this really nice little video and and just thought, just thought, wow, that's that's pretty that's pretty interesting. That's pretty cool. Very stirring. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. It was like very stirring and and you know, in your spirit. But I didn't realize what it was all about. And until a little bit later on, you know, and I'm sure that a lot of us have had similar experiences, but for me, you know, I was, you know, um, you know, I've, I've had these weird experiences that, you know, late at night, you know, where, I, where I wake up and, you know, and I'm, you know, in your, in the, you know, in the middle of these things and these feelings of, of, of fear and oppression or, you know, or, you know, are, are, are around you. And I didn't really realize what rock is up was until, you know, until one of those nights and, and, you know, it is the believers war cry. It really is, you know, because well, we are at it, war, right? <laughs> we are absolutely at war. We're a hundred percent at war, and the and I think the scary just, thing about that, just for clarity, we're not um, talking about a hot war with bullets flying. Although there are spiritual bullets flying, but this is where Paul says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, and rulers over the darkness of this world. So. This is the war we're, but it's a real war. It's and just because it's in the spiritual realm doesn't mean it's not a real war. <laughs> that we need to have a war cry for. <laughs> so, hey, well, exactly, exactly right. And I think, I think you know, we we can actually see the the spiritual war being played out in the in the physical, right? Because we can see, you know, the the attitudes of people. We can right. see the uncertainty in the world. We can see you know, the persecution and, and, you know, all of these things that are happening in the world right now, we can see very much so and very clearly that there is a spiritual war going on just by looking at, at, you know, at the natural, at, you know, <laughs> at what we see with our eyes and what we read, you know, what we comprehend with our own mind. Yeah. You know, so, so for for me personally, I think you know, knowing that we're at war, then doesn't it make sense to that God would also give us the tools to be able to battle? I mean, Paul talks about the armor of God. He talks about you know, um, you know, he talks about the sword of the spirit and the breastplate of righteousness, and you know, and and the, you know, the shoes of the gospel of peace, and you know, all these you know, you know, shield of faith, and all these other things. 
Well, wouldn't it also make sense that if we have if we have that, that we also have the war cry to go along with it? Amen. Yeah. In fact, in fact, maybe that's been one of the pieces missing. <laughs> you might be dressed for battle, but if you don't have that, that I, you know, you can just imagine when when um, Joshua was at the river, getting ready to cross over with Israel, and he said, "Chazak, chazak, v'ni chazak," you know. He's he he's he's pulled up all of this energy in his as he yells that term to the people to he wants them to walk forward boldly. It's it's like there's an energy that's released when we say this war cry. There's absolutely an energy that's released when you say that, and you can feel it when you do. You know, there's this it it's this it's this tightening of 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 your of your body it's this readiness to to you know to go to war i mean think about think about gideon you know you know later on and you know after after joshua and you know <laughs> and and the angel of the lord comes to him and he says he says you know um yeah you know uh, you know uh, you you have too many people you know uh, you know all those people tell all the ones that are afraid you know, tell them to leave, tell them that they go back home to their families. And, and to me, to me, that, that's kind that's kind of the, you know, I, I really like that example. I, I, I like reading that because, you know, it says that, you know, around 10,000 people or 10,000 of his soldiers got up and they left. Yeah. You know, they didn't and, need them anyway. <laughs> They're going to be. Yeah, we're, we're exactly, exactly right. But they left because they were afraid. Yeah. You know, and, and that fear and, would just filter out through the rest of them, so they needed to be gone. Yeah. Well, you know, it's that, but you know, it's also I think I think I think you know, and you know what what you know what I'm trying to say with that is that you know they they would have had their sword, they would have had their shield, they would have had their armor, you know, they would have been fully dressed for war, right? But what they didn't have is they didn't have the spirit of Rakhazah. Right, they didn't right. have the spirit of audacious certainty of success. And, you know, and the angel, you know, and the angel of the Lord, Elo, you know, Elohim was looking at that and knew that they didn't, knew that they were going to be more of a detriment, you know, to, to, to what was going to happen. And, you know, the, the 300 that did end up going when they blow their trumpets, I mean, you can just sit there and imagine you know, when they're throwing confusion, you know, when the confusion is coming into the camp and they're blowing their trumpets and all this other stuff, you know, to me, I can, I can just sit there and, and, and think, you know, where they're sitting there saying rock is up, right. You know, and, and it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, <laughs> I, I, I just think, you know, they, that the enemy turned upon themselves, you know, they, they started killing it, killing themselves, you know, Gideon didn't have to do much. Yeah. But you know, they they kind of did the job for him. But I I, I, I I like that 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 visual of of what Rakhazak is because that is you know that is um, in so many ways that is that is the angel of the Lord that is Yeshua fighting right. our battles for us. And that's a point a point I was just wanting to make. There is I think it's really important to understand that Rock Hazak has a whole lot to do with um, depending on God to do what he says he's going to do. So Gideon, you know, he's got 300 men. He's standing up there in three different divisions, 100 each on the hills around the camp. And in the natural, he's got to be thinking, this is crazy. <laughs> you know? um, but at the same time, he has enough trust in God that he's going, I'm going to go ahead and do what he told me to do because I'm trusting that he's going to do what he said he's going to do. And that's the, and, and when we say audacious, audacious certainty of success, part of that audacious certainty is the audacious certainty that God's going to do his part. It's not just about us getting enough courage to make things happen, but it's about getting enough faith, enough trust in God to to know that he's going to do what he said he's going to do. So that's a big part of it. I think we need to understand as well. 
Well, isn't it isn't it interesting that that all of this that that Gideon, you know, that that you know happened to Gideon all started with that revelation. Right. Exactly. It all started, you know, the angel of the Lord showed up to him. Right? Right. And Gideon said said, Let me, you know, let me cook for you, you know, the food. And and you know, the the story was is that that um the angel burned up um he he consumed the uh, the food with fire, didn't he? Right, and yeah, and then the, and then the fleeces, and then so it's like God was taking Gideon on this step by step process. Each step gave him a little bit more trust that God was going to do what He said He was going to do. To the exactly point right. Where he's but standing up on the mountain with the torches and the pitchers. He is really at the place where he's trusting that God's going to do what He said He's going to do. Well, he had seen it. He had seen yeah, it. Yeah, he all, saw it. All exactly. That. But the revelation was because he said, now I know that I have seen, you know, I have seen the angel of the Lord. Yep. You yeah, know? Yeah. And that no is a solid knowing. <laughs> yeah, exa exactly. And that, and I think that is what we as believers, we have to pray for that. We have to have that knowing because without that knowing, to me, that knowing is foundational to everything. Well, and, and God tells us, I mean, you know, even in Malachi where he's talking about, you know, a lot of times churches use it for tithing to get people to give more money. But the real message there, God says, prove me now here. He said, put me to the test. <laughs> He challenges us to put him to the test so that we can have that knowing that Gideon had. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And and I think that that's the thing that that you know, I think recently and you know, maybe to take this thing, you know, one step further, I think I think one of the things that I've recently come to you know, to to you know, to see is that is that, you know, as believers in Christ, you know, Christ, as believers in Yeshua, you know, we, we are, you know, that we are, war, you know, warriors, right? You know, we are warriors for Christ. We are warriors for the gospel, you know, like, and, you know, one of the things that I think has really been fascinating for me recently is is understanding the 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 correlation between between worship and between warrior because we you know I, I think it's such a fascinating thing to think about you know worshiping warriors you know and and having and having that having having that war cry I mean it it, it just it takes you it takes you back you know it it gives you this picture of David doesn't it you know. It's you know the, the 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 worshiping warrior, you know, and 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 it's this journey of Rakazak. I, I I said I said not too long ago that for me personally, you know, Rakazak is that is that is that hill where you plant your flag, right? Because yeah. Rakazak encompass, encompasses so much of 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 what of what the Bible is all about. And, you know, for, you know, for me, being able to share this journey and, and share this rock as with other people who might not understand what it means like that, you know, that being able to try and impart that revelation to other people, I think is just fascinating and not just fascinating, but I think it's, it's amazing because, you know, for me personally, just to explain a little bit of a personal experience here, you know, about what's, you know, about what is going on, you know, with, with, with me. And, and we talk about this a lot, especially here in Australia, because things are so oppressed, yeah. you know, I'm not allowed to work. I'm not allowed to, you, you know, to go, job even, so. you know, to go to the shops, Yeah, you know, I'm not allowed to, to basically do, really much of anything and um you know for me you know when you lose so much of that you lose a lot of purpose you know in 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 your life and i think you know one of the great things that's come out of this whole experience is that you know i think god does 
he does isolate you know you because he wants to he wants to bring you to himself he wants you to he wants to bring you to the end of you Re- remove so that you can find him yeah yeah and and i think i think you know with all of those things being taken away you know um here in Australia, I've come to realize that so many of those things were distractions. You know, so many of those things were, um, you know, things that were just keeping me off track. And I wasn't, you know, that were keeping me away from from the calling, from from the the plans and purposes that that God has. And you know, one of the amazing things is, is, and part of this pod, you know, this, this podcast and and videos and other things that we're doing is you're taking purpose, the purpose that you generally so many times find in a job and, you know, in all these extracurricular things that you find yourself caught up in and you start to find your purpose in, in Yeshua and you, you find your purpose in his message. And, you know, for me, when I say, when I said that, that rock Azak was that thing that, you know, that hill that you plant your flag, you know, and you say, you know, this is the one that I'm standing on. This is truth to me. And this is, and, and this is, for me personally, this is an honor to be able to stand here and be able to embark, you know, on the very first part of this journey moving forward you know, to share this message and not just this message, but many other messages, but to follow the plans and the purposes that God has, you know, for, for, for me, for you, for everybody on the, on this planet who would look at and accept, you know, accept him into, in, into their lives and accept his plans and purposes, you know, and they may be completely different from the direction you're going right now. But you find ultimate fulfillment, you know, only when you are following, you know, directly in, in line with what with with who he is and what he has for you. Yeah. Yeah, because um, and I, I think that's an important point of of refocusing, um, removing the distractions. And it is interesting how our Heavenly Father cares so much about us that he actually sometimes will step in and remove some of those distractions even when we don't really want to give them up (laughs) but in at the long run as we trust him as much as Gideon trusted him to be directing our lives in the in the right direction for our good (laughs) and not evil You know, like in Jeremiah, he says, I know the plans I have for you, plans for good and not evil, and for hope and a future. And uh, and so a lot of times, he, because he's a loving father, sometimes he takes us through circumstances that we wouldn't choose ourselves. But he knows what we're going to look like on the other side of that, of that circumstance. And he yeah. takes us through it to get us to that place. And uh, if we don't trust him and not kick and scream, well, sometimes we kick and scream and still trust him. But anyway, um, but it gets us to, you know, he's, I heard somebody say once that he's willing to sacrifice our comfort in order to get our character. <laughs> so I think that's a lot of what's happening in these processes that we're going through. Oh, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a great, you know, it's such a true statement. And, and, you know, I think, you know, I don't remember where it says it in the Bible, but it says, you know, that God disciplines those that he loves. Right. Yeah. You know, and, you know, if we're not following the right, the right path and the right track, then God will come in and, and, you know, (laughs) and do what, do what he needs to do to get us back to where, you know, to where we need to be. I mean, Mm-hmm. my life is a living testament of that yeah oh you sure <laughs> it's been quite a ride huh yeah yeah it has been but you know i think ultimately i i i, I think there's a couple things that that um you know that i'd like to say i think first and foremost i think 
you know, Joshua, you know, I had the opportunity to talk to Isabel, my daughter, yesterday. Um, you know, about Very some nice. about some really important stuff. And and um, you know, I hoping that she she starts to get it. But one of the things I told her was, and at the end of Joshua, he says. He's he's tell he's he tells the, the the children of Israel. He says, "Choose today, you know, choose this day who you're going to serve." And then a little while after that, he says, "As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord." Right. And yeah, you know, and it was like I was telling my daughter. I said, "I said, there's a reason that he uses that terminology of choose this day, right? It's because every day it's a choice. It's not a one-off choice, right? You know, it's not a." Oh, I choose God, and then the rest of my life, you know, this once saved, always, always saved stuff. It's choose today. You know, are 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 you going to follow Yeshua? Are you going to follow His commandments? Are you going to follow Him today? And then tomorrow, when I wake up, I'm going to be. I ask myself that same question again. And you know, for me. I think the other side of it is is that is that the only decision that we can ever make is the decision to say yes. Yes, today I'm choosing you. You know, there's no other option, there's no going back, there's no turning around. You know, I'm not going back to that person that I was. You know, I wasn't an overly bad person, but I wasn't an overly good person. So you know, that person has to die. And we, you know, we have to choose today. I mean, I, I you know, yesterday I, I I was, you know, I was at my at my son's graduation and there's people there. And, you know, by by my choices, you know, I'm not I'm not able to go and watch him graduate. You know, and I'm sitting there going, going, you know. You know, yeah, I, I would love to. I would love to spend time with this, and you know, and realizing when we go camping in a couple of weeks, you know, am I going to be able to spend time with people? Am I going to be able to go out to dinner? All this other type of stuff, and I, and and you know, and I started to get kind of sad and upset about it, you know. But then I woke up this morning and I said, I said, no, I'm not sad and upset about it. You know, you made the choice, I'm not. yeah, because because I've made the choice. I know what direction I'm going and there's no other option. You know, even though there is another option, I mean, we, you know, we can choose whatever we want to choose, you know, it's like, like free choice, you know, it's something that we're supposed to have. But if we follow Yeshua, if we follow his plans and purposes for our life, then we don't have a choice, right? Because he is the only way. He is the only truth. He is the only life. And he is the only way to the Father. He is the only way to eternal life. You know? And that's what I was trying to explain, you know, trying to get get, get across to my daughter was that, was that, if we, you know, looking at this life, looking at where, where we are here, um, you know, the reason that that people want to sit there and go, well, there is no afterlife, is because they don't want to choose, is they don't want to be faced with the re realization of there's either eternal life or there's eternal death. But there's no in between. There's no other options. Right. So you either choose life or you choose death. And I think that is really what the summary of what Joshua was saying. He said, choose today who you're going to serve. Right. He's saying choose life or choose death there's not there's not an option of no choice it kind of reminds me of the song bob dylan wrote you got to serve somebody <laughs> yeah yeah 100 percent. yeah you know not making a choice is making a choice yeah that's right you know so i i um so that's that's kind of that's kind of uh, us in a nutshell. I know we've kind of gone off on a little bit of a tangent there, but no, not really. Um, <laughs> but um, 
I think it's 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 important, and and I can't overstate how important Rock Hazak is. I really can't, because I really do believe that Rock Hazak is that missing element. It's that missing key. It's that missing what you know. It's that missing force that 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 um that most believers don't even know they're missing. Well. And I just to kind of follow up on that. Um, you had an idea a um, month or so back about we should take that idea of rock hazak. Since we live in the t shirt age, <laughs> why don't we make yeah. a t shirt that has that um, written on it as well as we made up a couple of different logos? And, and so, um, just want people to know that we we actually have made available t-shirts we're not trying to make a bunch of money off of t-shirts what we really want to do is put the word out there of rock Azak. we want you to be wearing that shirt and somebody come up to you and say what does that mean you know because it's obviously not an english word and um, that gives you an opportunity to to talk about the things that we've just been talking about over this last half hour um yeah and and I think I think it's also it's it's a personal reminder as well as well you know yeah. you know because because we all we all there's not there's not a single person and you know that I think doesn't get beaten up or you know tried to get you know the enemy tries to beat up everybody you know he's the deceiver he's the liar he's you know he's bent on our destruction and sometimes we just need to be reminded yeah and i think yeah. you know i think when we're when you're having a bad day when you're when you're feeling you know when when you're just getting beaten up i think having that reminder you look down you see that rock is out there and you and you realize you remember yeah because we can get so caught up because i know this is true and if it's true for me i know it's true for a lot of other people is that we can get so caught up in ourselves where we, you know, we allow that depression and we allow that frustration and that anger to cloud everything else out. And, you know, to the point where we forget, because I know, I, you know, I know how many times I do, you know, I forget. And sometimes, you know, you know, the spirit reminds me and says, says, you know, you do have, you, you are able to fight back, you know, like you, you have, have the power this. to fight back. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like, like you have the ability to fight back, you know, you, you, your God is bigger, you know, you, like your God has overcome everything. All authority sits in Yeshua's hand, Amen. but yeah. we forget that. Yeah. And, and I think sometimes, you know, when you have that, not only is it, like you said, it's a witness to other people, but it's a witness to yourself, you know? It's, it's, it's a witness to yourself and the fact that, you know, you, you look in the mirror, you, you know, you forget you're having that down day, you're getting beaten up by the enemy. You look in the mirror and you're like, oh, right. Rock the Zock. Yeah. I do have the power to fight back. Amen. So, yeah, we, you know, we'll, we'll just, we'll put the link on down below or, or whatever, but, um, also you Probably can put just, it. you can go to the calming store.com. We've got it up up there and then we also have rock r-a-k dash c-h-a-z-a-k dot com either one of those has the um, rock kazakh t-shirts hoodies and all that i think mom's even put uh put together a handbag for some of the gals and uh so yeah we'll probably even come up with some hats and stuff so well yeah i mean uh, you know obviously there's you know there's there's going to be different designs and, you know, different logos and stuff like that, which, you know, which, which we, uh, we will get to, but, you know, I think, you know, the reason that they, I think the, the, the most important, the reason that we're doing this is, is again, it's not, it's not about the money. It's, it's about, it's about the message. Right. Yeah. You know, it's, it's about, it's about empowering the believers, you know, it's about empowering the set apart believers. Yep. And, you know, it's, it's about being, you know, it's about properly equipping ourselves, you know, to, to, to fight the battles to come, because believe me, there's a lot of battles that are coming down the pipe that yeah. 
if we're not rooted in foundation, you know, and founded, you know, the foundation in Yeshua, then, then you will easily be overcome, right. you know, because it is only Yeshua that makes us stand. And that's why, that's why, you know, Rock Hazak is that hill that I've decided to plant my flag on because that to me is, as I've said already, it's the missing, it's the missing piece. Yeah, and a lot of the teaching I do as we go around the country, I remind people that it's kind of like the book of Esther. We were brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. You know, it's no, it's no accident that we were born when we were born, where we were born, to the family we were born, with the understandings and the historical perspectives that we're in. And, and if this indeed is a prophetic and historic time, then we need to be at our top game. You know, I talk about the frequencies of the music as helping us tune back, but I think Rock Hazak is is another part of that tuning, helping us to to get our getting get our fighting form back, <laughs> so that we're ready to take on the enemy and. Uh, and once again, it's we don't fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the other side of that is we overcome because our focus is on Yeshua, the blood of the Lamb, and the word of our testimony. And the word of our testimony. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah we can't we can't underestimate any of that we really can't you know keep our keep our eyes on yeshua keep our eyes lifted up yeah you know that you know our redemption is drawing near you know the the the, the evil will be judged you know um we just have to we have to hold on you know we have to hold on and that's the great thing about that is, is that God, Yeshua has given us the ability. He's given us the strength to hold on. And, mm -hmm. you know, for me personally, I am really excited about exploring the subject more. And, um, well, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and hopefully people who listen to this, they, um, they walk away with something. Yeah. You know, and, you know, I think the last thing that I really want to say is even if you don't agree with everything we've said, you know, don't, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, right? right? I, I'm a big believer in there's so, there's those, so many people that, that, um, you know, have something, you know, have something there's so, you know, there's something for everybody is really is really what it comes down to. You, you don't have to swallow the whole thing. Right. You don't have to agree with the whole thing. But don't let the bias keep you from the truths that you do need. Yeah. I, you know, I, I tell people to treat it like a buffet or like go to, go to Golden Corral. You can't eat everything there. Just get the things that you like and uh, leave the rest of it alone. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and 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 I think I think I think that's I think that's the, you know, that's what we have to have to keep in mind, you know, is is let's let's learn from each other, let's help each other, let's not focus on the things that we don't agree on, the the things that, you know, are are you know the, you know those things, that's that's okay. We don't need to focus on that. We need to focus on the things that unite us. Right. Right. You know, we need to focus on the things that bring us together. Yeah, that's right. And, you there's know, enough, and so... There's enough so, things trying to divide us. We don't need to help them out. Yeah, exactly right. And and so so I think, you know, that's really the, you know, the last thing that I want to say um, to people is keep an open mind. You know, let the Spirit speak to you. And, you know, let let the truth, you know, let let that truth, hopefully my prayer is is that you'll find you know people will find those specks of truth from 
you know, what we're saying and what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that those specks of truth will change people's lives. That's, that's all I can hope for. Well, that's probably a good place to leave it for this week. And, um, we encourage you to uh, stay tuned because we feel like we've started on a journey here and uh, there'll be more to come. So uh, absolutely. Absolutely. thanks for joining us for this episode. Appreciate it. And remember, rock chazak. <laughs>